In simplest form, radical negative 300 is equivalent to which of these? So there's a couple things we should talk about in terms of how to do this problem. One is dealing with negatives in a radical, which is to say that you're taking the square root of a negative number, which, which can't be done, right? So the answer is, a, is called a complex number or an imaginary number. So we have to somehow use i. What is i? i is the square root of negative 1. So that's one thing we're going to talk about. And the other thing is just in general simplifying radicals. How is that done? When do you multiply what's under a radical together? When, when can you not do that? And um, how do you know when you have it in simplest form? For example, right away I'm looking at choice number 2 and it's not in simplest form, right? Because radical 12 is really equal to radical 4 times radical 3 because you can multiply what's under the radicals together. So radical 4 times radical 3 would be radical 12. And what is radical 4? Radical 4 is just 2. So this is 2 rad 3. So right away we see answer choice 2 is not in simplest form. We can eliminate that one right away. Okay, but let's get back to starting with the given and seeing what it would equal. So we notice that we're taking the square root of a negative number so we're going to separate the square root of negative 300 into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 300. Now this just equals i. So now we have i sorry i times square root of 300. Now 300 is not a perfect square so we have to separate this into separate square roots and there's really no wrong way to do this. What you'd like to be able to do is to factor out of 300 the biggest perfect square that you can think of. Now if you don't get the biggest one on the first time you can do this multiple times. But the first one that comes to mind for me is 100. I know 100 is a perfect square and it goes in evenly to 300. So why not separate this into square root of 100 times square root of 3? That's what I'll do. So we still have to carry the i. It's still there. And now we have square root of 100 times the square root of 3. Now notice we could at any time go back the other way, right? Square root of 100 times square root of 3. We could be right back up here at square root of 300 so we know it's equal. All right? So now we still have i. And square root of 100 is 10, right? 10 times 10 is 100. So 100 is a perfect square. Its square root is 10 times radical 3. And now it's just a matter of what order you present these in. So typically we do the constant number first, and then i would be second, and the radical will come at the end. So we'll just change the order here to make it look like the answer choices. Not that it's wrong the way it is above, but this is just the, typically how we present it in standard form. And that's the answer 10i radical 3.